back in the kitchen. Uh, just harvested, just came in, washed up our scapes, and going to make pesto. Very easy recipe. If you've made pesto with basil, it's essentially the same. But in this particular one, I think I'm going to do a little bit of substitution. I don't have any pine nuts. So instead, I thought I would use sunflower seeds, you know, just the hearts of the sunflower seeds. I have oh, a couple cups of unsalted ones. And so right now on the stove, I have my pan heating and I'm going to toast them. So let's start out with doing that. Come on. Here we go. I just have a small cast iron pan. I have one quarter cup of unsalted sunflower hearts. No need to add any oil. The reason you do this is to bring the oil out of the seed. Now we aren't looking for any um, browning or anything like that. That would add too much of a, um, of a flavor to it. We're just wanting to heat these enough so that they release their oils. Oh, I smell it already. Constantly keeping them um, moving. You can already see it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. They are releasing some of their oils. You can see the glistening of them. So after about 30 seconds, I think we're about 30 seconds in, um, these are looking good. I can smell them now. And I think I'm going to just remove them from the heat. And I'll probably just let them sit here. Yum. I think sunflower seeds will be a great substitution for the pine nuts can't always find pine nuts too readily in the store. A lot of bulk stores have them. Okay, now back for the other ingredients. Okay, I did chop, chop up um, my scapes. Just a coarse chop. You don't need to finely chop them. Your processor is going to do that. This is three quarters of a cup of coarsely chopped garlic scapes. Now I find that sometimes my food processor is a little bit too big for small batches. So I have this tiny little one, which I've had for ages. It's, I don't even know what kind it is. It is, it's a sunbeam. That's an old name. Okay, so you're going to put those in here first. Now, how I'm, I'm deviating from the recipe a little bit. Oftentimes, I will take the garlic scapes because they're very potent, and I will put in some basil in addition to this. But since my basil is rather on the small side and I don't want to take too much of it from my garden, I picked some dill. I thought dill would be a great addition to this. I usually plan on um, using this pesto with fish. Oftentimes, it's so good. So dill would be um, a, a wonderful addition to this. So just rough chop with the dill. I'm taking off the big stems, but I am not throwing these away. They are, ex they are extremely aromatic. I will just let them dry and I'll use them in my pickles later on in the summer. So just a rough cut. This looks to be, oh, perhaps a quarter of a cup. And I'm gonna put that in the processor also. Okay, there we go. I can move this 
press over just a little bit. There we are. Okay. Now, in addition, I could add some of my basil from last year. This is dried basil. There's nothing wrong with adding dried basil. It still has mm, great basil -y taste. I'm just going to put in a few flakes of that. Now the next ingredient is lemon. I'm going to take the lemon zest off of this, um, probably oh, half to three quarters of, of this lemon. And then we're going to juice just half of this lemon. The lemon will add some bright freshness to the pesto. Make sure you don't get the seeds. The seeds will be bitter in this. It's a fairly juicy, fairly juicy lemon. Look at those seeds. Don't want those. Maybe we'll just give it a another squirt. Okay. All right, next ingredient is going to be a half a teaspoon, one, half a teaspoon of a salt. So I'll put that in there. This is pink Himalayan sea salt. It has no added iodine or any other added ingredients in it. Next, we want a little bit of black pepper. This is totally to taste. I just put in just a tiny smidge of coarsely ground pepper. And now, let me go get those. Let me bring over our sunflowers seeds. And we'll put those in there. They've cooled just enough. Mm. That all smells wonderful. And it calls for about a half a cup of olive oil. Now this is liable to get a little noisy. So let's see, let her rip. Okay, just enough to get these ingredients just enough to get these ingredients roughly mixed together. And then we're going to do a slow drizzle of the olive oil. Oops, I need a, an additional hand here. I'm going to stop it midway and Scrape down the sides. I just love this little mini processor. It has served me well. I do have a large one, but for small batches, can't beat it. I always just do an extremely slow drizzle to incorporate this looking very fine. Sometimes the recipes will, the amount of olive oil will be too much for it. But that seems to be fine. I have probably, 
Oh, an eighth of a cup left. Okay. I think that is a pretty good consistency. Mm. Very spreadable, not too oily. Mmm, smells good. Mmm. Mmm. That is really, really good. I like the dill in there. It's just a hint. It cuts the garlic of the scapes. Okay, the last thing we need, because this is delicious, is some Parmesan cheese. And we need about a quarter of a cup. And I always freshly grate it. Just a little whirl. Just a couple pulses. And that's all that's needed. Oh, wow, is that good? Mm. Very, very good. Now I store it in little um, ice cube trays. I find that um, single serving sizes work very well. Oh, where's my spoon? I'm not sure that this was gonna stay in the freezer very long. I do like the dill in there. It seems to temper the garlic quite a bit. In the past, when I've made uh, garlic scape pesto, the garlic is very pronounced and very sharp. But in adding a couple things here, the sunflower seeds were changed from the from the original recipe of pine nuts and the addition of the dill. I think that has tempered the garlic quite a bit. I wish you had taste division <laughs> because this stuff is awesome. I'm gonna have to see if I can't find something for dinner tonight that I can use this in. Maybe we'll even have it just on, on a bruschetta. I got the wrong top. Anyway, has a form-fitting top, fits on it, puts it in the, in, the, in the freezer. So that is garlic scape pesto. This turned out even better 
than I thought. This was kind of spur of the moment. I realized I didn't have pine nuts. Um, I thought I'd add a little dill because I know in the past that the, the garlic scapes can be a little intense at times. And so um, throwing in the dill really, really helped. And it is very, very tasty. Don't know what else I'd add to it. Maybe I'd add just a little bit more pepper. Um, but other than that, this is awesome. I know I have more scapes out in the garden, so I am gonna be filling up this tray and many more like it so I can have garlic scape pesto all winter long. So until the next time that we can go digging in the dirt, happy gardening, bye.